when you talk about Tinubu Capture and Funshaw Williams, yes. how did the egoes die? Mm -hmm. How did the Igwe, a man and a wife, yes. who are criticizing uh, we, me, how did we, they we die? No, 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 now, no, no, no. two, hold on. Two, okay, uh, but wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait a moment. Who changed it? Who changed Hold on. Don't interject. Don't interject. I didn't interject. I didn't interject. You lied. You lied. Hello, my great and wonderful people. How on a day today? I hope all of on a day were. We get this video for our table when we say we'll quickly leave you make you watch. This one a video when we say with the receive from Barrister Kenneth, when going to be the spokesman of Peter Obi of Labour Party. Yes, this man don't set studio on fire. This one on the recent interview when we say he grant to AIT News. Not be only in one, him and also other representatives of other parties. This one now more or less like a debate. It really tough. I want to make one take one time to watch this video, although a long, a little bit. And before then, I beg help us to like this video because I'm the only one will be saying YouTube will fit help us recommend this video to each and every one of us all over the world. The more this video get likes, the more that they recommend down to people. Now their own policy now it be that very one. Thank you so much for your understanding. Now I will leave you to watch the video. We'll come back are going out from our shores to other countries. We have what it takes to populate the whole world with professionals. Indians, if you go to United States, if you go to United Kingdom particularly, you will see Asians practicing their medicine. When they were going there the first time, it appeared as if it was brain drain. When they went there, they articulated the medical position of England, learned from them, went back to their country and they have established one of the best medical facilities in India. So what we're going to do is my principal having seen the developmental agenda of all countries because that's why he travels to all countries. He said look I'm going to invest in education through the STEM education science, technology, engineering, mathematics. When you do that, you build surplus professionals that you can now engage in legal migration. You can now feed the whole world with your intellectuals. So we are going to develop our youths, enhance their human capital to make sure that we can feed the world if they want with intellectualism and professionalism. So we are not scared of brain drain in Labour Party or in the regime of P2B, he's going to transform it to brain gain. Having said that, let us come into the issue of corruption. One of the seven point agenda of my principle is restructuring through effective legal and institutional reforms that will aggressively fight corruption, prevent corruption, maintain rule of law, reduce cost of governance, and ensure an honest and efficient civil service in Nigeria by the combined effects of the incompetence of PDP and APC that led us to have a civil service that you cannot do anything without offering money. I can tell you that for free. That is why we say they are transactional. You cannot do anything in Nigeria now without going into the transaction of it. Corruption, my principle could not even accept what is due for him, was not even and has not been taking any pension as a former governor, could not even take any plot of land. When I went, when we went to Bini, I was in above Bini's palace and the other looked at him and said, your integrity is going before you. I have a principle that loads corruption not only that he will not be corrupt he's incorruptible and coming into the issue of education you have heard about certain you have heard about sexual harassment these things are all vestiges of a collapsing and a failing educational system the reason when lecturers their take home can no longer take them home they start looking especially the ones that may not be as godly as some other ones. They start looking for other ways to make both ends meet. When students do not have lecturers that teach them because their lecturers are doing other businesses, they begin to look for other ways to survive. When my principal was the governor of Anambra State, he first of all returned the schools 
to their original owners who will manage the school effectively. He put money, do you know? He bought laptops. He digitalized the educational system of Anambra State. As at that time, it was not accidental. They turned and became first. It was not accidental that the university that is in Anambra State today did not join the strike. And when they were asked, they say it was the formula that was built by P2B when he was the governor. So educationally, the corruption is as a result of poverty. It is as a result of not being able to afford what you ought to afford. Talking about the issue of corruption in APC government, one person stealing 109 billion naira, and he's the person that is the custodian of the money. How much will you give education when the person that is the custodian is stealing such amount? You can see what is going on in budget. They have never budgeted up to 10% in education since their inception. Of course, their leaders are not very good. They are not known to have had certificates. Even the one they have is litigable and pejorable. I don't want to go into the issue of legal because they will accuse me of intimidating them, being a learned gentleman. But what I'm trying to say is that in corruption, APC has failed, PDP has failed, the presidential candidate of PDP was described as the most corrupt person on earth by his own president, written in his own book. Is that the kind of man you would want to come to supervise a corrupt education? I don't want to talk about APC. The name, another name for APC is corruption, and they cannot fight it. Because it's become systemic in APC. And I don't want to talk about their presidential candidate that has captured a state like Lagos. So education is not his priority. But when it comes to my principle, like I have told you, we are interested in a digital economy. He started the process in Anambra State. And we are still going to do it. You don't wipe corruption okay. except you fund education. Except okay. you make sure that the youths... Uh, like I told you, you have to retrain the teachers, you have to retool them, and you have to recertify them. Okay, let me let me come to Honorable Clinton. I saw him chuckling there. Um, now, Nigeria has become a major exporter of students to foreign institutions. And when you ask parents and stakeholders, they will tell you it's because of the lack of safe schools. Over $100 billion lost to global market to international educational bodies from Nigeria. So, how will your candidate look at the specific plans, what plans does he have to also initiate and enhance safety and secure security of schools, which is creating this level of exodus of students to other schools outside uh, of the country? Yes, yeah, security, like I, I, you are correct. But let me make uh, this uh, round statement on the issue of parties and ideology. Nigerian, the Nigerian populace is getting wary of politicians who talk about ideology. If any man has no ideology in Nigeria today, it is Peter B. If he has no principles, it is Peter B. This is a man who was given the spiritual and political heritage of an Anambra State by no other person than the late Ikemba. May he so rest in peace. And the man swore before the Igbo people and said, if I leave this party to collapse, let me and my children see nothing good. He swore, he can put it on record. We have the record if we want and we play it on earth. Now, hardly had he left office than the quest for power for power's sake, power mongering, drove him to become a vice president to the article he's talking gleefully about today. He was vice president, I can't believe. They are one in 2019. We'll be discussing now as a vice president. When it was now evidence to him that he had no space to contest for presidency, he moved to the Labour Party. What is his ideology? Directly opposite, a man who runs a private a capitalist economy as an importer, as a trader, which he had admitted to be, had no business in labor. What is labor all about? Labor is the first that went on, which he was calling much. What the APC candidate at that time was to join labor, the Nigerian Labor Congress, on that match, when it was time, when they were sitting on no subsidy. So if he's talking about ideology today, one of the biggest problems we have is this lack of ideological standing. Two, is that we are not going to get talking about sloganeering. 
bringing slogans and engaging in labeling. We are going to do this, brain gain, brain gain, uh, production to. This is just sing song. We are not in true lobbies. <laughs> we must have to get into the reality of things. And these two people have been governors, please. So I'm happy that he said that Anambra State University did not go on strike because of the foundation laid by Peter B. Of course, you heard his, the present governor and his remarks, for which they are known as usual. The attack dogs on social media have gone after him. They, two days after, he was physically attacked in his community for that. They are known for this. I saw somebody, I left the studio on one occasion. The first time we came to start the campaigns here, and the first call I got is, if you don't want to vote it up here, I will show you that you will not see 2023 20, election. I got that message, and the next thing I saw was a young man brandishing a gun and oiling it and sending it to me as a video here and threatening me with that. Now, this is part of the desperation to which we delude and get our supporters into. What has happened in Lagos with Tinubu? What are the reasons of Tinubu which he said he captured? How do you capture an intellectual group like the Lagos State people? You capture a professor, a pastor, you professor a senior advocate like, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, like uh, fa 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 uh, Fashola, you, you capture a, 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 a democratic spirit, a, a, a humanitarian, a, 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 a radical, a Marxist radical like Aregbe Shola. You capture them. You capture an intellectual like Fire Me. You capture him, enslave him. And for a man, you say, did not go to school. And when I hear you say, who are his primary school mates? It makes me laugh. Please, who are the primary school mates of the almighty Afe Babalola? Who are his secondary school mates? I thought you wanted to give me the primary school mates. Give me the I'll ones of fashion. You are a lawyer. Yes. Will you dispute who Afe Babalola Afe Babalola is not a presidential candidate. No, no. Must mm -hmm. he be a presidential candidate to show you his classmates? When he becomes he a become presidential candidate, we'll, we'll question how did, how did that. How did he become a senior advocate? No. Question him as a lawyer. No, no, no. You're the, no the one saying. Now, yeah. it is a, a very pedestrian argument each time mm -hmm. I hear this. It's so pedestrian that in 2022, you can leave your house and write Wayek without talking to anybody. Today, is not that in, what he did? In, in, not in 19. Did he ever tell no, you? No, no, no. Tell us about he your present, principal. He, wait. Oh, yes. They have right. Chicago I, I, denied I, I, him. I, 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 we are running out of time. I now, let me, yeah, me. So let me not get there. Like I say, it's a very pedestrian argument that has no basis because the courts are there for you to. You are a lawyer. I don't know why you are wasting time on the court of public opinion when there is a tradition. I would have rather opinion. like you to tell so, me the safety and security measures. Now, on no, security. You have nothing on that. On security. I, had, I started by telling you that you cannot do education, economy, or anything without security. That's why I laid my And I said they are interlinked. And the security architecture that is presently on, mm. you remember that this government has started doing, no government since 1960 has acquired military hardware than this regime. Please cross check and fact check this. Mm. Show us what we've spent on this and what is showing today. Today, as we speak, you are aware that. After the Kuje prisons and after the Republican, uh, the, 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 the Brigade of Guards was attacked, those officers were attacked. As we speak today, people are driving safely to Kaduna. People are All denied right. safely to Kaduna. We've not had any more kidnappings on that route. And indeed, today, today, just today, the rail lines have opened again. Mm. Today. The, the rail lines have opened. But just, but just, but just yesterday, there, was, there was an so attack on a mosque and several people were abducted. And when? So in the mosque yesterday in, in Castina State. We are talking, I'm uh, giving you the example of the unsafe Kaduna rail road that was, is resumed we're, we're talking. We're talking At, about the country. Mm. About the country. <coughs> you will agree with me that we have no flags flying again of bandits or Boko Haram. Indeed, we are not discussing bandits and kidnappers. We are no longer discussing Boko Haram which was a major crisis for Nigeria where we took off from in 2015. Okay, let, let me, let and me, of course, you should I, also remember... I should have a right of reply. Let, let, me, let me come back because mm. uh, I'm just told that we're running out of time. Final thoughts from all of you here. Uh, let me come back to you, uh, Sonny. I mean, you've heard what all the other uh, spokespersons have said. Um, still, millions of children are out of school and people are hoping, how do we get them back? What are your final thoughts? How is this going to happen, considering so the fact I'll that this is a problem? I want to address the issue of uh, you see, um, on this panel, I've been the only person that uh, I'm the only person that is privileged to have given statistics on what we have done, and nobody has been able to dispute whether they were effective or they were not. The fact that they could not dispute this, uh, this uh, uh, 
institutions and things that PDP did over the years, that means they are working. And the PDP is going to improve on them. Now, if you remember in 2015, Nigerians were coming back en masse into the country to come and invest. Why did that happen? Because Nigeria, was, Nigeria then was uh, the biggest um, economy in Africa and it was the, most, um, um, it was the fastest growing economy in uh, 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 sub saharan Africa and it was also the fastest growing economy in the world then. One of the fastest growing economy, economies in the world then. So Nigerians were coming back home because there was something, there was, there was something of posi positive going on in the country. Now, if the educational sector, like what, what uh, uh, Elijah Abubakar Abu 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 has planned in his recovery plan, if it's properly achieved, what's going to happen is that there will be a boost in the educational sector. Those things, when we say the Chinese are going back home today, the Indians are making impact back home today, is because their institutions can, can, can be at par with what the ones they are, they are work, where they are working abroad. So if today, Obafemi Awo University, Unilag and Uniben and the rest of them, they are par with uh, 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 some of the universities you have in England and the, the, the uh, University of uh, Pennsylvania and the rest of them. You will find doctors in those universities coming home here to come and lecture. Because why? The facilities are there for them to work with. And the same way people were moving their phones into the country in 2015, you see them coming back into the country. Elijah Atikou Abouaka is the only person that has a different way of tackling the current situation that we revolutionize what we have now right. without mess saying. Then secondly, we're talking about security, how to, how to secure the educational system. Before we left in 2015, there was already a plan in place where the, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, the Safe School Initiative was already in progress to be able to keep the school safe. Now PDP always come up with agendas, with plans put in place that people can see and they are working. We don't just talk. We don't just give rhetorics and just throw things in the air. You can see them working. When you talk about corruption, people say fight. PDP is the only government that has fought corruption. Now we don't know about uh, we don't know about uh, uh, labor. They are talking like the APC now. You know, in the uh, in the past, but the APC has had several years now. Nothing has happened. PDP were the ones that talking about institutions. They were the ones that introduced the I I I IPS uh, the system mm. of payment. So to cut away all those, all, all those whatever. All right. Let, let is the one that introduced the TSA. You don't fight corruption by just shouting. With, with fight. No, you fight corruption by putting institutions in place that will check it. Because whether we like it or not, corruption is part of human nature. It will be there for life. In China, people are still corrupt. So all this talk of trying to make Nigerians, trying to woo Nigerians with, oh, corruption, corruption. That was what they did in 2015. And Nigerians foolishly follow that corruption slogan and look at where we are today. Okay. PNP is all about institutions. L let me come institutions in place to check me to check corruption, which has always because, worked because they're embedded in human work. nature. Maybe somebody will argue with that, but let, let me yeah. come to your final thoughts, uh, Barrister Kenneth. Right. Um, I'm surprised that my colleague here said it's not going to go personal, but it's understandable because APC has never kept to their promise. Now, when he said uh, Obi made a promise he was going to stay in Apuga, he made that promise to Ojuku. And Obi remained in Apuga until Ojuku passed on. And his own forever has started. And let me tell you about agreement in law. When you make an agreement, it is between two persons. If the other party is not keeping to the agreement, you do not have any right to remain where you are. Victor May was the first person that said that to the world about that pact, which Obi made wheat ojuku but you know what victor may himself is now in labor party and you know what he said he says because of what they're doing in apuga today the apuga today is not the apuga that ojuku dreamt of and whoever who said that has every right if the other party changes his own agreement you are not compelled to remain in it now he said about um, his principal how he captured lagos now, let me tell him how he captured Lagos. Tinubu has never governed Lagos through the state apparatus. He always creates his own apparatus. Mawa wiped out Alaye boys and retooled them and renamed them good boys and girls of Lagos. Tinubu came in and empowered them the more. What happened to Funcho Williams? The greatest political opponent of Tinubu was killed, assassinated. All right. In 2003, and nothing has been known about it. How he captured Lagos. Tinubu said, if anybody tells you there will be a change of government, tell the person, shut up. 
Mentioning Funkel as Kindle's name in his presence, he will tell you it irritates him. He captured Lagos through intimidation. We will not succumb to the in blackmail of intimidators in All 2023. Right, let, 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 How did he capture Lagos? Let, when the National let, Union of Road Transport Workers suspended I mean, the we, Lagos we have branch to go of the now. Union, yes. what, uh, what, what did they do? They created another... You are taking your time. We have so what go. I'm trying to tell you, is that me, Tinubu captured Lagos through intimidation? Okay, let, let, we let, are let coming me, to capture Nigeria through inspiration. By let, let me let All me right, quickly let me, quick, quickly, yeah, let me quickly, quickly say that the PDP were the ones who told us that we can only do election by do or die. PDP is the one that arrested judgments and suspended an appeal court president. Can, can I didn't say, intercept. Please? I didn't interject. Then they also proceeded to suspend Salami, a president of the court of appeal. Yeah. Never in our history have we gotten those type of things. And if you remember, there was a book called the, uh, the Civil War Call Election 2003. It was under midwife by PDP. That is on the judiciary and on the political end. So we couldn't have inherited that. Two is that when you talk about Tinubu Capture and Funshaw Williams, yes. how did the Igwe's die? Mm -hmm. How did the Igwe, a man and a wife, yes. who are criticizing uh, we, him, how did we, they we die? No, 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 all right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say una dosi. <laughs> I bet no verse. You know, honestly, when you be say you believe on something and you see the lights for that thing, definitely you feel better your life with that very thing. Now, what we see about Barista Kenneth, now it be that very one. Honestly, this man, you know, mind to take the Easier of Peter Obi to another level because he get confident 100% upon this very movement, just like as we also get confident. All right, I will leave you to share your own opinion with us on the comment section concerning that very one, even as we draw the line here. And as usual, I beg help us to like this video so that other people will feel a chance to see video like this and also know the good works when they see people they do for this very movement and as you do so god almighty will bless you we would like to draw the line here we will see you when we see you remember we love you all bye bye